This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Well, we now must say farewell to Judge Clifton Newman in the Alec Murdoch case. He has requested a new judge handle post-trial motions involving Alec Murdoch's murder charges. So not a complete goodbye as of yet. He's still going to be there for the financial crimes trials, which we have one that's scheduled to take place on November 27th. If we actually get there, that's a, a whole other question. But Judge Clifton Newman saying, yeah, you know what? I agree. The optics here don't look the greatest at the very least. Avoiding any sort of appellate issues. Let me let me take a step down from that. Joining me to discuss Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent. You think this is the right move for Judge Clifton Newman? You got to have respect. Yeah. I happen to think so. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter in some in a lot of cases what the I mean, he could argue why he doesn't need to be removed. He's not affected by any of these things that happened. But again, like you said, the optics aren't good. And if that lessens the faith in the infrastructure we have and, and faith in our institutions to do justice unbiasedly in law, then you have to rec recuse yourself from it because there's going to be so many questions. In other words, he would become a distraction towards the justice that needs to be done in our system. Mm -hmm. And so good on him for doing it, not because he was wrong or did anything wrong, but he knows the impact w that was starting to happen by yeah. him staying on. And, and granted, you can't, it, it's, I'm sure he was around, you know, doing a, a delicate balance here. You can't be bullied off of, you know, the bench because that just undermines the system as well. But I, I think in this case, he, he did a, a, did the right thing, hopefully for himself and for the case, because we all, you know, you and I said before, I think we thought he did a great job during the case. So yeah. let's hope that, let's hope justice continues to be served. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think he was a very good, fair judge. Could he continue yeah. on and be impartial? I, I think he certainly could, but just the optics are what they are. Uh, you know, he's been there. It's going to be what it is beyond his control. He did nothing wrong. And you said something really good there that we think he could continue to be impartial, mm -hmm. but can we, you know, at a certain point, you know, he, so here he is the judge. He sat through the entire trial and he's the one that listened to them read the guilty verdict. And he's the one that did the sentencing. Mm -hmm. Can you still remain impartial? Like if it was, it's, it's probably not. It's yeah. really challenging because we all fall into our own confirmation biases and personal biases that from the things that we're exposed to. And when you come into it the, from the first get go and you have and you are a judge and you're sitting here seeing both sides of it and you're hearing the arguments by, you know, trained lawyers and, and by you know, watching and, and giving the jury instructions, that's a great process the first time around. But when you go through it and now you have your own conclusions you've made and been part of. It's a good point. Well, and I guess. He might he might think he can be unbiased, sure. but a, a, if you use some good intellectual honesty for yourself, you say, you know what? I think I can, but I probably can't. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all human. So is yeah. he. And yeah, just kind of realizing as much as you may want to be or try to be, once the information is there, the information is there. So and think about this. And we'll do a thought experiment. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you on this no. one. So, so here you are, you are accused of doing wrong. And if Newman had stayed in and fought to stay on as the judge for this case, and now you go into trial and you get Newman assigned to you as your judge, you're like, oh, man, mm -hmm. I've got that guy. Is he going to be fair? I mean, he kind of would. And then but as opposed to you get him after he saw and had some intellectual honesty, he wanted to make sure he remained unbiased and not involved in something with bad optics. And then you got him as a judge. You're like, hey, we got a shot because this guy's fair and impartial. He's mm -hmm. actually intellectually honest. I mean, so I think he did himself a real solid by doing that as opposed to staying and fighting. The other question, though, would be he has not recused himself from the financial crimes trial. Can he be impartial there? Knowing what we know, I mean, Alec has flat out admitted to many of those crimes. Should he stay on for there? Should he just call it a day completely on Murdoch, go write a book, go to the beach and enjoy life? I don't know. I would think that it is two different um, charges coming at it. Mm -hmm. And I think, 
he's already admitted guilt to it. So I think it's going to be not as not quite the same. So, and he, he also knows the material. He knows individuals intimately more than anyone else. And so I think if he was to back out on that one, he would burden the court system with having to get someone else up to speed and having to bring someone else in maybe. I mean, so I, I don't know, cause yeah. I don't know the intricacies of how that court works, sure. but at this point, because he recused himself from one thing, you kind of trust him a little bit more to make the decision, don't you? I do. I do. But I think your thought process there and that thought experiment of can you really truly be impartial? I think that, you know, that matters a lot no matter what you're trying. Once you have a certain vision of someone, I think it certainly played a part in the conviction of Alec Murdoch, uh, knowing those financial bad acts in conjunction with the accusations of murder. Yeah. I think he knows his, Yeah, you know, I think it will help if he does stay on it is that he knows Murdoch intimately well, personality, baselines. I mean, all these things involved because he's sat there, watched him so long more than anyone else. And so, but yeah, we'll see. I, it'll be interesting if he starts getting pushed back on that one as well. What is their action to that would be? In the interest of uh, whether you love uh, Alec Murdoch or hate him, justice should be served no matter what. And it should have a fair trial. Right. His attorney's now saying, hey, you know what? We need to move this thing. The uh, We've been doing this here. Unprecedented media coverage is the exact verbiage that they've used, seen by millions, and then saying it needs to be moved somewhere else than where it's been being held. Anywhere you go, this is a huge case. I think it would be almost known anywhere in the country. But should that happen? Should this Is that a valid argument? Should they move this out of the locality where it's at? Because I'm sure literally everybody knows about it there, whether they follow true crime or not may not be the same. If we go, you know, many counties away. We've seen this with a bunch of defense attorneys in some of the cases we've covered. And I think it's really holding true more than for these two than many. Mm -hmm. They're very good defense attorneys. Their job is to exercise every single nook and cranny in the law they possibly can that is written to not break the law, to follow the law. Their job is to defend their client to the utmost of their ability, using every single legal tool at their disposal to do it. And they're doing just that. Should they, shouldn't they? I don't think should or shouldn't comes into their brain mindset for that. Mm -hmm. Their job is to do all they can to mitigate all the risks to their client they possibly can. And so it makes sense they're doing this. It totally makes sense they're doing this. Whether it will happen or not, I don't know. Yeah, Because again, that's up to the legal system to do. And we've talked about the challenges of the legal system down there. Is it fair? Is it unbiased? Because you know it's such yeah. reaching uh, tendrils on there. But I don't... It, because someone's can been convicted, you want to... It's. I know it's always hard for people to kind of separate... The fact that how could you ever be a defense attorney for such a bad person? If you didn't have good defense attorneys doing all they could to exercise the law, you wouldn't have faith in our law and legal system. Sure. No faith in the legal system and the entire structure falls apart. Mm-hmm. And so I, as much as you know, we 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 don't like when people stand up for the for these really bad people. It actually keeps our faith in our institutions solid that they do such a due diligence job. So yeah, hands, hats off to them doing that. Whether it works or not, who knows? Again, hopefully. See, again, if you have faith in our system, whatever decision they come up with, you're like, well, that's a legal safe decision to do because that's the way it should work. Mm-hmm. And if all of a sudden we say, oh, that's crap, blah, 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 you know, it shouldn't have happened. Well, it's because we no longer have faith in that system. You only question systems that they had behaviors that causes to have questions about them. Mm-hmm. So let's hope that all these things fall into place. And I think Judge Newman did a good job showing some faith in the system. Yeah. Because, you know, and, you know, so it's, it's interesting watching these behavior balancing acts because without us as human beings and citizens saying, okay, we see it with transparency, with honesty, and here's our system it'll fall apart. So I, I like what I'm seeing so far. Let's hope it, it fleshes out right. Let's hope if they find that someone did something wrong in the courtroom and, the, and that there was influence and, you know, by the clerk or whatever the accusations are, or, the, you know, all of the stuff that's going on, that gets all flushed out and, and he gets convicted again if they do it. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? 
Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.